I wanted to go in just review some of the, like, the notes from like past team call from this past year because I thought um, kind of my team and I either overlook some of these basics or you know the new coaches that we have brought in need some of those little aha loves that, um, that I know I wasn't translating it down to my downline. But I don't know if my coaches were, you know, doing it to theirs. Um, and I found a few people who were like strictly discount coaches, kind of getting that bug of moving into the working coach. Um, but they still have like a huge, um, like to get over that hurdle. Like they're freaking out. They use that word working. They think like they have to do everything that I do. <laughs> like no, that takes time. Like that's when I first started. Is it my microphone that sounds weird? No, you sound alright. Okay. It sounds fine. Yeah, yeah. What's wrong with this? Hold on. Um. Oh, okay. I don't know why. All right. Well, I'm not switching cameras, but. <laughs> I might have to. I don't know. I'll keep talking. So I went all the way back almost like last year. It was that I dated it. It was at August 31st, 2017. Right. And I labeled it baby coach as kind of like these little quick things that a baby can do, which were really similar to what kind of talked about getting that, you know, that quick start guide. Um, you know, the Fitzbire Empire, the big now that we have and but I don't know I haven't gone to a single page of that but I like to already use the, the verbiage to one of um, my downline coaches in that she wants to be working she's a stay-at-home mom she potentially has the time the pockets of time you know to do what what we do but she immediately like thinks like, oh, to be a work coach, I just can't do it now. I don't have the time, or I'm not. You know, all those excuses. I'm not at that fitness level. I don't have confidence yet. Right. So I just reminded her that already doing basic vital behaviors and and showing up in the challenge group every day in the challenge group. So I told her, let's just translate that into what you're posting on the challenge group. Just copy paste do that, that exact same post, maybe tweak it a little bit, put up put it on your personal page. I think it's that may be her connection. Okay. But because on her personal page, I look, there's like nothing about fitness. Nothing. Like you would not know that she worked out. And there's actually not very many pictures of her. Well, that might actually be a good thing in some in some ways when there's like I tell my new coaches when they start mm -hmm. to just start posting about themselves. Yeah. So actually I the opposite. I say, don't even worry about getting a fitness post in right now. Just share about your life and who you are. And that's, that's usually easier to share about than some kind of fitness or something else. So mm -hmm. I just have them talk about their life and that usually gets people kind of in a groove of like, Oh, I can share about, because I've had people who don't really do social media at all, but they're yeah. going to have to learn. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, maybe I can also throw that out at her and see which one she's more comfortable with. And yeah. then I just kind of wanted her to know that it wasn't so so much so much work that she's already creating a really good post in the challenge group. She doesn't need to recreate anything. Right, I do that all the time. Right. Yeah, I do too. I kind of word something a little bit different, or I would take hashtags out, but it's out there. Um, and then I know in the team page lately, I've been trying to at least just share with everybody, like specifically what scripts I'm using, which I've always done, but I'm specifically using like these two, like the coach invite and the invite to challenge group. I've been using those. The last three weeks, like, have changed the wording um, on both Instagram and Facebook. 
So I kind of felt like maybe it was more simple it was easier. But some of my invites were way too complicated, way too wordy, um, or they were too specific to like the time, you know, based off of a holiday or a season. Oh, right. Um, which those are still good when, but I think that have someone that I can share with my team easier. Yeah, it's easier to um to just make it very generic. And at any point in time, no matter like when you come into uh, you know our team, here you go. Here's the scripts, and here we're laying it out. Um, and I still need to take the time and revamp my original. Steps I had to a challenge group. Um, because that's something that I know is really important for newbie coaches to kind of just have that step by step. Don't have to think about what do I say when they say yes or when they say no. It's kind of like here you go. If they say yes, you say no. Then go to the other attachment where we talk about objections. You know, all. Um. Um, I have a question for you. Yeah. The latest scripts that you were using, the ones from three weeks ago or the past three weeks, did you put them in the coach group just recently? On my team page, yes. Okay, because I actually want to take a look at them. I, th I thought I saw it flash by and I was trying to remember where it was because I actually want to go back. I want to copy one of yours and try it. Like I have my own. Yeah. Sometimes. I like to try somebody else's. I just want to see what happens. Exactly. Yeah, I just did, I think, yesterday. I think yesterday I posted both of them. Yeah, I have to go back and look at it. Um, but I really like it. And I also posted today, like, um, a call to action. Not that you need anything. You need help with call to action. But sometimes I like switching it up and, and wording it. And this yeah. one I've never done. I've never been so, like, uh, so just like up front, let me kind of read it. Like I, I did you say up front? Yeah, I've never been like just blah, like right there. So, um, where the hell is it? Oh my gosh! Oh, come on, where did I put it? Because I met a coach at my kids' swim lessons, and she's a yeah. Your diamond, super yeah. sweet. I friend she, I friended her. She worked Back. She like automatically commented on one of my posts, um, and like we wants to get together. Um, oh, good for like coffee and, and everything. And so she seems really cool. She used to be a speech therapist, um, and now stay at home mom with two babies. So it's you still up one. I don't know actually. Um, I can't remember now. Oh. I'll have to ask her again. I'm pretty sure she told me, and it just kind of went in my brain. Um, but I found this and I asked her, I was like, Hey, I love how you ended it. Like, can I use it? Can I tweak it? And she was like, absolutely. So she was talking about, you know, her life and, and a coach, a coach life. Right. And so yeah. she said, coach life is the best life. I have 20 invites to 20 lucky women on Instagram today. Right. Fine. We say that before, but she goes and says, I don't send them out to women to be my your bestie because I'm picky as fuck after being in this business. And if you're one of the lucky ones, consider it a compliment and be open minded. Like I've never said that in a poem. Wait, wait, can you say it? wait, can you say the last part again? I couldn't hear you, so I had to cut out. You said if you're one of the lucky ones, something, something was that consider it a compliment and be open minded. Be open-minded, you said. Yeah. 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 Consider it a compliment and be open-minded. And then, she, and then, like, kind of like give a little bit of what coaching has done, you know, like, you know, you know more. And you super open-minded, right? Is what you just said. That's what? Good. You said con consider it a compliment and be open-minded. Yes. Yeah. And then she kind of goes into a little bit like bullet points of what coach has you know, financially or whatever, you know, be more, to be, not have to call in sick. Um, but that, and then she ended it, imagine what it can do for you. I just thought it was interesting because like, I've never said, 
that like I've never said that I only send it out to women that I think could be like you know that could be you know, my future best friend or whatever I don't ever say that I'm picky as fuck like being more specific like that and you know some people might be put off and that's okay if they are then obviously like then that's I don't that's not the type of person that I want I want somebody to like oh good you're it's like, so am I, I'm picky. I don't want to just, you know, have anybody and everybody as my best friend or, or be part of this. Um, I just thought it was um, I, I, have, I, haven't, I haven't been that way to, like, someone who I don't know so well, but right. there are at least three people I can think of off the top of my head who um, I've been asking to coach for, like, years now, yeah. and they always say no, but I have said something like, um, but now remember, I, I, I know these people you know, it's not with them, but I knew them from work. Or maybe I knew them for like, or maybe I met them on Facebook, but I've known them now for a long time. I seems like, well, you know, I'm just going to keep asking you until you say yes. Mm -hmm. I do say that. <laughs> I just said this to somebody else yesterday and she was laughing and she was like, I just don't have time. And I'm like, but you know, I'm just going to keep asking. <laughs> I'm just going to wear you down until you have no, nothing else to say. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, I mean, that's how I got some of my coaches. I just kept at it, kept at it. I'm like, you know, you, this is, you're already doing everything. Um, yeah. I know one thing too that, that I love that we've kind of been changing and, and it's thanks to you, it, um, is really making sure and taking that time weekly to, you know, reflect about like what we're grateful for, you know, or, 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 you know, shout outs to, you know, to people, other people in our, in our team. Cause. I would do it and then I'd, you know, fizzle off and I would fizzle off. And so I'm kind of glad that you do it because then it's like, oh shit, I really need to highlight some people. Like I could give shout outs for sure. And I just, it gets overlooked for some, for some, for some reason. Yeah. I mean, I do that. I've been doing that for months. I've been doing that every week, but a lot of times it's only like a few people that uh, write back. I mean, it's usually like Jen. Chad, uh, Carol Mays usually does it. There's like a few people that will answer, but a lot of people that don't. I just still do it anyway because I figure I, I can only control myself, so I'm just keep doing it. <laughs> and if even if nobody wants to show up and do it, I'll still do it, you know? Yeah. Well, and I really liked it because I mean, I, today, I mean, I got a lot of interaction. That's That's honestly the most interaction that I've gotten like asking people to like respond in a long time I would see yeah they they've seen it you know or they liked it but to actually take a quick you know minute to just you know blurb and whatever is going on that was that was a first in a, in a long time so I really I really like I really like that and I need to I want to make sure that that becomes a habit um because sometimes there's like those, those quiet, you know, those quiet um, ones that they're doing, they're doing their stuff, you know, but they might just not be like, be want, want to be in the limelight, you know, and stand out and speak up. So I can't let I, uh, I put my gratitude thing right on my Instagram stories. I took a video of it. Oh, did, you, did you go look at it? Did you see my Instagram stories? I that. Oh my God. Well, I just thought I'm going to start doing that every week. Like, why not? Why not? My whole thing is that if people want to see what I'm really doing, like what I really do, then that's what I do. I actually write that shit out. And so I decided to like, instead of just taking a snapshot, I mean, for you, for our group, I put a snapshot because I just, you know, it's fine. I'll put a snapshot, but on Instagram, I scan the piece of paper and I flip the page and I scan it again. I, I think, Somebody might, I think it's a great, my, personally, I think, uh, you know me, I'm, I'm always into trying something new. That's my thing. I've got to try something new, new angle. I feel like if I saw that on somebody's page, I'd be like, wow, that's what those people do. Like, that's pretty cool. Like, if I saw that, I'd be intrigued by those kind of people do that. <laughs> like, that's what I want to know. Like, what are they doing over there? It's not all about just working out and eating, you know, kale and cakes. <laughs> Yeah, and I wrote real stuff about real people. Like some of my discount coaches, their names are in there. And mm -hmm. like this one lady, her husband just had big surgery yesterday and he's okay. And I felt relieved about that, that he's okay. And I put her name in there, you know. 
so let people see. I mean, I, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing high. Uh, what do you call it? My brain's dead. Uh, <laughs> top secret or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing that's that's gonna make anybody like sit no. or, or anything too personal or whatever. No, I like and I, I I panned it just enough so that if somebody reading it, w they'd be able to catch a phrase here and then another phrase there, but they couldn't right. read the whole closely. Yeah. But they could catch a few few random phrases of, of and you could tell it was an appreciation of different. No, I love that because yeah, I take the time every day to write in my journal. Um, yeah, things I come up with grateful or like positive affirmations because it's a lot stronger when it's written than as opposed to just saying, just reading it. Yeah. I like that. Though. I'm going to have, I haven't looked at your, um, your stories um, since this morning. I have another idea if you want to pass on to your guys. I just, I didn't, uh, I put it in my coach group, but I don't think even you saw it. I think some, some of you guys missed it. But my other idea is I have a lot of people. Just let's, let's just say clients. I mean, whatever clients, coaches, whoever, uh, who they start off hot out of the gate and they're feeling really good. They really get into the program. They're doing really well. And then something really bad happens that throws them off track. So my idea was that popped in my head the other day. I said, why don't I catch people now when they're feeling good? Like we're talking now when they're doing all right. Mm -hmm. And I asked people, could you write a few sentences about how you, how well you feel? after you've had a couple good days under your belt, how well do you feel when you, you know, have a couple good days of clean eating under your belt? Like just like, like a, like a good streak, write down how you're feeling. And I told them they weren't allowed to write down any kind of do things like, but more like just how they feel mm -hmm. after doing it. And then I told them to send it to me. And what I'm going to do is save it. I'm actually not going to even use it or post it anywhere right now. I'm just going to save it. And my idea was that when that person hits a rut, which I know is going to happen, I'm going to pull up what they wrote and I can send it back to them. Mm -hmm. And the way I came up with this idea, now I haven't done it yet because I have to first collect these things, but my idea was I was looking back at my old challenge tracker and I saw when people got welcomed, I found some really old welcome graphics for people that have fallen off. Yeah. And, you know, when you see them and they're all excited because they got their new package and I take a picture, I'm like, welcome, you know, whatever. Kristen to the team, you know, and then I just thought like, wouldn't it be cool? And I've sent those to people who have gone AWOL. I sent them to my messenger. I'm like, Hey, I just came across your original welcome graphic. And I really did. I'm like, isn't that cool? And I'm like, gosh, I wish you'd come back to us. Like you did. So like, I remind them of how well they did. Cause I have a really good memory. Like I remember people even for like years, like I, I can even tell you what program they did and what they said. And all that stuff. So I mail it back to them and I thought, well, why don't I catch that with people while they're doing good and then just save it? So that's my idea if you want to steal it or try it or whatever. I love that because yeah, that's so strong for them to have to write down their words and then for us to resend them yeah. their own words back at them. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is it's easy to do when you're feeling good. That's why I'm saying do it now while things are going well. They'll, they can probably do it in like five minutes, you know, it's no yeah, big deal because they're feeling great. <laughs> you know once and when they do feel bad or in that rut then hopefully those remembering their positive words can stop them from yeah that stuff. Um, anyway I don't have any results to share with you on this yet because it's a brand new idea I'm just going to try to implement it and I'll let you know what happens if it works or not <laughs> I don't know we can try it too let yeah. me know <laughs> I mean I'm gonna I'll try it too so we'll both you know have our little beta testing and see how it goes um yeah what else did I, what else was it that I wanted to do? What was this? I like bookmarked all these different notes, but I don't think I like this one. What's the next one? Oh, I do remember that when I had Preeti on a while yeah. ago, back in March, um, she had some really great points in that focusing obviously like the energy of our page. So sometimes I do, I need to take a step back and look through my newsfeed and check, like, see, okay, was, you know, was, what was kind of like maybe like the theme or the focus of all my posts? Were they all, you know, was, was I just focusing more on like me and my struggle and what I'm going through? Or, you know, was I being more of like a smart ass? Was I, you know, what, what did I have passive aggressive stuff? Did I share too many 
um, or did I just share, you know, too many other people's posts and things like that. Um, yeah. That's a good point. That can kind of, that can, people will, people will, will gauge off of that and maybe we don't even realize that, oh my gosh, that wasn't the, that wasn't the vibe or that wasn't the message, you know, that I wanted to really push out there. Um, yeah. And I think the biggest I know the biggest part for me that I always struggled with, and my mom even said it to me today. She's like, Kristen, maybe you need to really start figuring out how to recruit people your own age. <laughs> and, cause she's like, and I'm like, well, you're right. I do. I do need to try to get out there. I'm like, which is why I'm like volunteering at my kid's school and, and things like that. Because yeah, I would say the, a good portion of the coaches that I do bring in, whether they're working or discount coaches. Are they um, older? I don't know. Yeah, they're older than me. I mean, they're at least 10 years older or more. There's oh, big wow. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah, well, you might feel safer. Maybe you feel safer with older people. I mean, I'm not saying it in a bad way, but right. just like like I grew up around older people. My parents were really old. My, my mom was old when she, and my dad were old when they had me. So my whole entire upbringing was all around senior citizens. That's mm -hmm. just what I'm used to. Yeah, Probably I, why I married an older man in my first marriage. And I still, to this day, I, I like being with older people. Mm -hmm. I so that I, might be the I, company. Yeah. yeah, I always liked being around older people as well growing up. Um, so I didn't, I, I didn't really realize that until my mom mentioned that to me. I'm like, well, yeah, I guess. That's <laughs> really what she said. It's right here. I'm like, well... I guess you know. Yeah, start hanging out with people your own age. I Act mean, your age, will you? Yeah, mainly she said because uh, she's like, well, maybe because you know, here it wouldn't be so um, like it wouldn't be so hard to, to teach them like the technology stuff or you know social media stuff. And I'm oh, like, oh right, well, right, yeah. Yes and no. I'm like, I don't really think it matters really the age. I think it really just matters that the personality because I know some people that are my age and yeah, they don't want to be on social media at all, or they only want to be on Instagram and have some funky ass name, you know, that nobody will know that it's them. Um, yeah. I oh, well, I have, a, I have a coach that does that too. She's a really, very introverted. And she was like, but I'm on Instagram and my own boyfriend's like that. He, he was like, you can post whatever you want, whatever uh, on Instagram. He's like, but you have to check with me first about what you're putting on Facebook. Like as if, as if someone's not going to go to Instagram and do the same damn thing. I don't know. You're on one. It should. And his name is like Chad Mays on Instagram. So hello, there's no like disguise here. It's the same name. <laughs> Just Google him for Christ's sake. Yeah, he needs to make that no name on Instagram. But, <laughs> but no. No, I think you're right. I don't think that's to do with age at all because um, my father, for example, was 80 and he learned word processing for the first time at 80 and he died at 88 so I mean I mean I don't think it's anything to do with that I think it has to do with if you understand that it's an element of your business that your business can't run without this element it's like saying I'm going to open up a restaurant but I'm not going to order a gas grill right well dude how do you run your restaurant if you don't have a gas grill so it's like if coaching involves social media, it involves technology, we're a virtual home workout industry. We're the leader. I mean, you can't have home industry push play kind of thing, digital touch, and we don't know how to be on the internet, you know? Right? Yeah. That's the only thing. So, so I think there's a lot of, of open-minded young people. There's a lot of open-minded older people, and there's a lot of closed-minded younger people. Too. Yes. So. And I, 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 was, I told her, you know, I think I really hone in on like me and like my type of people because I was kind of like all over the place before you know and like well I'm gonna try and you know gra you know grab gravitate towards this group and maybe this group and that group but I was never consistent and you know it's I tell like my baby coaches you know to hashtag you know let me figure out what like what ways, like, you know, eight to 10 ways can they describe themselves in just one word? Which have done that, those activities. And so then those ones give you the idea of those are your people. You want to connect with those same <coughs> words and use those hashtags. Yeah, well, that's what I do. I say it's still in my book. 
book and when I restart a new book, you know, you see it's like just recopy uh-huh. to a new book. This is me. It's my 28 or whatever characteristics of me it, that, um, and it was in the last book. I just recopy it every time I start a new book and I just run through this. Like I say, okay, this week I'm going to post about number 22, number eight, number two, number six. <laughs> and then those are my tribe. I mean, anything I post about here, um, I'm also seeking these people who are probably having these same 28 things in their life. So in some way, not all at once, but some, you know, some way. So they could make a list like that. You don't even need the fancy pinwheel that we were doing in the fist yeah. part. I mean, that, that one's nice too, but you don't even need that. I just wrote it on a piece of paper. Yeah, I, I just that. keep copying. I, like, I honestly thought of way more and I was like, well, I need more spaces than that. Like now I gotta like, yeah. even make it more refined. So I think that's, that was a missing link for me. And I, it's funny because I told Aaron to start hashtagging. So he picked a few things that like he felt like really described to him or, or the lifestyle that he wants to have, you know, as a coach. Yeah. He's like already getting like extreme, you know, um, rock climbers. You know, to oh, really? Page. And I'm like, shit, I, I need to really follow my own advice. Oh, he'd get along with my ex husband just fine because that's all he ever did was extreme mountain biking and like. All this crazy yes, stuff. Mountain biking, rock climbing, yes, all those extreme things. He does a freaking like all uh, those extreme uh, stuff. kite surfing thing, you know, and all I would love stuff. to try that. Never done it. But yeah, it's so I, I've been i I've been focusing on like, yes, I'm adding that whole hashtag coach life when it's applicable that I that I see that Andy Kai is doing. But then yeah. also I've been trying to go back to just simplifying of like who am I? You know, like simply like I'm an autism mom. I'm a boy, right? Like, right. Right now, like, I'm doing a program where I lift weights. So either like I'm a mom or something like that, you know. Um, but I try to not make it so much fitness related. And I think that's the problem that a lot. I what I kind of directed my coaches in is that they were they were packing all these great things, but it was only bringing to follow them because it was all fitness stuff right yeah so like hashtag clean eating hashtag choose mindset you know and it's like well yeah only us beachbody coaches yeah i don't i don't ever hashtag anything having to do with beachbody i don't I, mean, I, I listen i i really went out on a limb today and i posted you're gonna laugh but this is like me out on a limb okay i never do this but I was like, I do it so rarely. I'm like, ah, I can get away with it. I posted a picture of my 2015 Team Beachbody water bottle from Summit. Oh, really? <laughs> I said Beachbody, and I was like, I was almost like, oh my god, should I take a picture or not? <laughs> but I did. I, I left it in my stories. But I was like talking about the coach trips and all the fun. I, I was try, I was trying to um, reminisce. I'm trying to do a little bit of reminiscing every week about the cool trips hit the reel with everything because i've been on a lot of trips and i don't talk about it enough like i'm on every one of those trips and it's a lot you know mm-hmm. so i might as well talk about it yeah i don't i don't try to do anything really beach body related um but yeah I've, spent, I've just spent way too much time especially going on instagram going through all those people who are following me or that i'm following and then realize, oh my gosh, you're a beach body coach, you're a beach body coach, and just having to unfollow them. Yeah. I don't see their stuff, and I don't really know why they want to see mine. <laughs> I don't know. I had some, I always wonder about that. I have some people that are coach, I think they're coaches, and they follow me. They're not on our team, and I don't know who they are. And I, I'm always like, <laughs> it's a little funny, I'm always like suspicious. Well, how do you, first of all, why do you have even time to care about what I'm doing? Because you're a coach, too. And why are you following me? Like, I don't know. I just, we are like, I, I wouldn't follow them. I only follow a very few people. Very few. Me, I don't follow people on our own team either. <laughs> um, I don't. Because then, like, when I did, I kind of got into that. Um, I'd start comparing myself. Or I'd start, you know, I'm reading their posts. And I'm like, what? And then I get I'm like, well, I think my post is better. How come, you know, this and that, and, you know, it's just not, it's not, it's not you know, it's not support everybody. But as far as like seeing what you're posting and how you're running your business, I don't need to see that every day. Not, not, not necessary for me. What was it? The other thing was. Yeah.
Well. Oh man, that was like a really great, like quick little sentence. Oh, and that we talked about, you know, how she had to develop like a thick skin pretty early on when she started coaching and that, you know, that there was never a bad conversation that, you know, no matter how many, um, oh, that's good. no matter how many messages she sent, it's okay if it was no, and I thought that before that. It's, it's never a bad conversation. Wayne, yeah. So that's good. That it, even if you didn't know, it, I still take it as a, not, that means just not right now. It doesn't mean that never. I won't, I won't stop following up until you flat out tell me, like, stop messaging. I'm not going to be interested. And even then, I wait like a year and then message you again. Right. Well, you're still going to hit them like a year later. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, that sound like I forgot that you said no. Um, and then she also mentioned if somebody wants to talk about any other company. Really, it doesn't matter. Any other company, any other shake, you know, protein bar, shake, or whatever, and kind of to give. The, you don't really have to say that. You can just say, "Yeah, well, I understand that that might be cheaper, or I understand, you know, that you can just go to your store and get it whenever." But think of it, you know, your products. There's like Walmart, and then Nordstrom's. And when she said that, I was like, "Oh, that's good." It's like, yeah, you can get, you can get, you know, jeans at Walmart. You can get a bathing suit at Walmart, but you can also get jeans and a bathing suit at Nordstrom. Which one do you think is going to last you longer? Is going to be like, I don't know, just like, you know, worth the investment. Do you know what right. I mean? Yeah. So it's like when you get that, when you get that objection, everyone understands and knows the price difference between Walmart and Nordstrom. Or if you want to say Walmart, you know, and like Blooming. You know, like pick two extremes. And, you know, I think of these body as like the Nordstrom's, you know, it's going to be like the best quality. Now you're going to pay more, but you're getting, you're getting that versus Walmart. Yeah, it's convenient. It's close. It's the last one time. Like my bathing suit top that I got at, North, uh, at Walmart, crappy, <laughs> crappy, but it was for 4th of July. I'm like, I don't really care. I didn't of July and done. If I need an actual bathing suit that's going like, to in and I can actually, you know, like do a jumping jack or do something like extreme like Aaron would want me to, yeah, I got to go probably to like Nordstrom's or like to their actual like surf store and pay a bunch of money. Um, but when she kind of gave that like, yeah, you can get, you can get results, but do you want Walmart results or do you want Nordstrom results? Um, and I think, and I just simple as that, not having to like, blah anymore. Cause I think that's a lot, a lot of times I think my newbie coaches and sometimes even I catch myself where I start saying too much. And if I just keep it simple and let them kind of like, um, marinate with it and think about it, they'll make, they'll make the decision. I don't need to keep feeling like I need to sell them on anything. Um, Thing I was gonna do. Um, oh, and so then on our last one of our other calls that we had with Kelly Campbell, she had some really great points, and I'm gonna go over like her top five points. In that, obviously, number one, being consistent, and we all know that, um, and me included, sometimes you know we fall short on that. Uh, and of course, you know, we're not perfect, give ourselves grace and, and you know, and move on. Um, but it's not just being consistent with yourself. It's, you know, thinking about if I wasn't a coach, I would still do the same things every day. So just because I'm having an off day, does it mean that my business needs to shut down? You know, yeah, it's a virtual business that we have. Uh, and I think that makes it a little bit harder than if it was like a brick and mortar business where you actually have to physically go to your store, open up, you know, have the cash register, talk to customers and all that stuff. You wouldn't be able to just call out and, you know, be like, oh, you know, I'm going through a tough time or I don't feel good or, you know, life's just really crazy. So I'm just not going to open up the store. That's essentially what we're doing when we don't show up, um, 
for our business. We don't show up. We don't share what it is, you know, how our, our life is like, what our, co what our current coach life is like, what we want our, our future coach life to look like, um, a day in the life of kind of a thing. Um, and so that also starts with just creating habits of making it just non-negotiables and just doing it over and over and over that you just kind of forget. It's just like brushing your teeth. You don't even notice it. You just, it's part of your routine. Uh, then it's also your mindset in that if you allow yourself to think, you know what, I'm just really tired, then you're going to feel tired. You're going to constantly feel tired. You're never going to get the energy. You're never going to feel like, oh, you know, I can do, I could do a little bit more. Or um, if you allow yourself to give in to those self-limiting beliefs or into those excuses, like step back and think, would I accept those excuses from my other coaches, from my, for my clients, from you know, an, an employee, if you know, if you're still having a, a having like a, a full-time job, would you accept those excuses as reasons why not to show up to work? And most times you're going to say no. So then why would you accept it from yourself? And that was a big thing when I reviewed it and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like I totally fell into that trap um, of, yeah, when I felt like life was just going super crazy, like, oh, it'll be okay. Like I did enough. And that's not right. Um, but we can also ask others to help us to be consistent. So that's where, you know, utilizing a, a success partner so that each of you can hold each other accountable, that each of you can help to rise each other up and to kind of motivate and, you know, and have the fire, you know, underneath our booties to keep going, to remind us of why we're doing this, what are our current goals, what do we need to do, or just then kind of like play and have like a fun little tit for tat game. I know Julie and I will do this sometimes where I'll be like, hey, I just cranked out like 20 some emails while, while sitting at, you know, Octavian's OT. And she's like, all right, I'll be able to get a little bit done, you know, later tonight. And then she'll show me and she's like, I got 12, I got like five more to go and I'm done for the night. Awesome. You know, and it doesn't matter the number. You know, it's not like we're trying to beat each other. Sometimes we might, sometimes, you know, we might try to like beat each other and be smart ass and like, you know, beat each other by one or beat each other by two. Um, but it's all in fun and it's all helping our business anyways. Um, it's not as like a nasty competition. It's literally out of fun and game and just being like a smart ass with each other. Um, so definitely showing up for one another that, you know, when one is having a hard time, we step in and we, we let them know that they're there, but then, you know, for them to but then they have to also know they can lean in, they can lean on us. Um, so if we need to, you know, step in and kind of help take over one of their challenge groups while they kind of get their ish together, get their head right, you know, for that day. Awesome. We'll do that. You know, um, if there is, if you're co-hosting, you know, a challenge group or a sneak peek, Hey, you know what today? I just can't do it. My life is just, you know, I'm just all out of whack. I'm just not in the right mindset. Cool. You know, take over, but it's, it's ask, you have to ask for the help and you have to ask others, Hey, help me to make sure that I am consistent. I want to work on these areas. So if you can check in with me and I'll check in with you on the areas that you need help. Um, and then the second area was, what do you look for in a leader? And, um, I wrote down some things on my phone as far as, you know, sometimes people will say no and I'll respond back to saying, I totally understand sometimes it's just not the right opportunity, but I have a really strong feeling you might know someone who would be really great for this. And so would you like to know who I'm looking for? And so then I'll tell them, like, this is who I'm looking for. Um, where is it? Yeah, I'm, here's what I'm looking for, a stay-at-home mom. Like, I absolutely love working with stay-at-home moms who need flexibility with their kids, but really need an extra stream of income. It's possible to grow a lucrative business while still being a hands-on mom you know, or teachers. I really love working with teachers because they're so good at being coachable and teaching others to do this business, this really simple business. Teachers love making more money because they're underpaid and they love having the option down the road to spend more time with their own, I said her, I mean to say their, their own kids rather than other people's. Plus, this is a great insulation from the pink slip because um, years ago we had a lot of teachers get pink slipped. So if you specifically know who your people are, who your, your tribe is, then you can have specific descriptions of who you're looking for in a leader. You know, 
on top of the fact of, you know, the kind of characteristics too, you want them to be reliable, you don't want them to have, you know, constant meltdowns, you don't want them to be ghosting all the time, you don't want to be chasing them, you know, where are you, what's going on, um, you want them to be an expert in their field, so like I said, you know, teacher, stay-at-home mom, maybe they're former corporate, you know, they're an expert in that field because those are the people that they're going to be able to relate to and really talk to and share and be like, hey, I was there and check it out. This is possible too. Um, and to show that, you know, and to have them to be fearless. I mean, hence that is our name is Dauntless, is to be lack of fear, um, to be able to go after what they want. Um, and yes, they might be scared, but to know that they can go after what they want and they have that support with them from our team. Um, and so that they can grow into those roles. Maybe they don't have them 100%, but they definitely can grow into those roles and be better. And then just as much as you know what qualities you want, you need to think and also list down the qualities that you dislike, um, that you're not going to um, mesh well and that do not serve you well. Hi, you're distracting me. <laughs> no, it's just me. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Recording. Thanks. Go away. <laughs> so, like qualities that you that you might dislike. Um, people who are just stuck and kind of like that selfless or so, like like they're just they can't get out of their funk that they feel like they're not in control over anything, that life happens to them, that they have no control to take action, um, to do what they want in life and to have things, have good things happen to them. I, those are qualities I dislike. Um, first things first, I'm not really. You can have them at first, but, oh, yeah, but after a while, I would think within the vibe of our team, if you kind of don't catch catch the positive vibes and the, the ability to kind of work to squash your self-limiting beliefs, then you're just not going to mesh well with me. Um, we all have our, our moments. We all have our times where we totally doubt ourselves. We talk bad to ourselves, but it's those people who are able to be like, that's my limit. I'm drawing the line. I can't talk to myself that way. I can't think that way. I have much better and more important things and I have a higher purpose in life and I'm gonna take control. Those are the people that are gonna serve me well. Um, and the third one is looking for clues in your potential challengers and customers, you know, getting them immersed into the program, getting them immersed into seeing results, but then it's also checking and seeing who are those people that are liking your posts day in and day out, you know? Maybe they just need that little extra nudge to not inviting them to a challenge group, but saying, hey, you know, I think you've got a lot of great potential. I would love to have you a part of my team. Here's what it, here's, you know, a quick, you know, info session. It's three days to kind of get an idea of what it is that I do. But you can maybe do this as a side gig and make a little extra money. You know, people want to be invited and want to feel like they're included and they're part of a group. So sometimes you need to forego inviting them to a challenge group because that's saying that they need help with their health and fitness is what they're taking it as. Just go ahead and go straight into inviting them to be a part of our team, part of our culture, and part of our family. Um, and that sometimes, and we think it's like the harder part and the more scarier part, but honestly, people would rather have, be invited to that and then be like, oh yeah, I trust you, you know, this is such a great atmosphere, this is such a great opportunity, and this is like gonna definitely solve a lot of the problems that add stress and anxiety to my life, which then are a factor as to why I can't lose weight and why I'm not motivated to work out. So if you think about it, sometimes inviting somebody into the coaching opportunity and seeing it as a solution to the issues they have in their life will then can make it a much easier transition to include them into a challenge group and figuring that out finally. Um, and then number four is being a resource to your people. So, you know, you don't, you need to make sure that they're not timid, that, that they don't, they don't feel like that they have to have all this expertise and, and all of these certifications or degrees. Um, and that just, the more knowledge means more trusting and that you're, and a better coach that you can be. So more knowledge, meaning more value and more content. 
and really sharing, you know, what it is that you've learned, the trials and tribulations, the failures, the, the successes that you've made, and really sharing those, um, either using Instagram or Facebook stories, you either whether, you know, going live and talking about different topics, and or then sharing, you know, a little bit, you know, before and after. Before Beachbody, this is how I was, and here I am after. Um, it doesn't need to be transformation as far as physical. A lot of times people really connect more when it's, when it's like the mental shift um, or sharing about how life, how you live life before and how you live life now. Um, and always stay coachable, you know. Um, soak up all the training that you can. I know there are some coaches in here and they're doing webinars left and right. And I love that. And sometimes you're gonna hear the same thing over and over in another webinar, but maybe you needed to hear it the way that person said it. And I'm pretty sure, and I know for myself and I'm pretty sure for them, every webinar that they that they're that they attend they're always able to walk away with something maybe everything that whole time wasn't like amazing but there are at least a few you know three to five tidbits they're able to walk away and be like ah you know what that's a really great thing i could implement or i never thought of it that way or now i understand kind of a thing um because it can be a sidebar to professional development is having all those extra webinars and the webinars don't necessarily need to be all Beachbody coaching related. Like I just signed up for a webinar for tomorrow and it's with um, Gabrielle Bernstein. She's the woman who does, you know, these cards and stuff and she's all about meditation. And so she's doing one about anxiety tomorrow and I need that. I'm going through some issues. And so I'm feeling like my anxiety is a little bit higher. I'm not sleeping really well. And I kind of get myself I uh, catch myself fixating on some other issues when I really should be focusing on my business and not my, not worrying about that, not stressing about it. Um, and, to, and, you know, being coachable, it goes back to a lot with what Preeti said, was like developing that thick skin, that it's very hard for me, yes, to take criticism, for someone to, to, uh, to nitpick, you know, my business, that's my baby, you know, I've been working at it, and, and but... I'm not perfect. I'm not amazing. You know, I'm not, I'm not at a rank where I want to be. I'm not at, um, at, you know, I'm not at the leader that I want to be. So I have to still be able to, to learn to be coachable and to take criticism. Now I take criticism when it is, you know, positive and helping me to move my business. Now, if you're just trying to nitpick and be nasty and you don't give me a solution on how to fix it, then I definitely don't take that kind of criticism. That's just putting me down. Um, but if, you know, if someone comes up to you and, and kind of tells you, hey, you know, I see you're doing this, this, and this, and they give you a solution, maybe you haven't tried that solution, or maybe you have tried that solution, but that's where having the thick skin, but also being coachable and understanding that everybody has a different approach to it, just as much as we need to still stay kind of like a sponge and absorb everything and not resist and not automatically be defensive and not automatically put up that wall of, of, of being angry and, and trying to protect ourselves. That especially within our own organization, our own team, if somebody does come and, you know, like I'll, I'll ask people to, to go ahead and check my newsfeed and tell me, what do you think, you know, Am I focusing too much on this? Am I focusing too much on, you know, having it all be about, be all about me or, you know, am I, or am I sounding like I'm too anxious or depressed or am I talking too much about, you know, being divorced or whatever it is, you know, I need that take. So, because that's what everybody else is seeing. That's what the people that I'm trying to reach are seeing. And if I'm not, if I'm, if my, my, team, you guys, and my fit family, and my success partners, and all and everybody else, they know my purpose. They know what I'm trying to get at. And if they're looking at my newsfeed, and they're like, I'm not seeing it, you're not really connecting with like your mission statement, or any of that stuff, then we've got to revamp. Um, and without that, then what's the point? It's just like, um, it's just like if, if a big company just does whatever they want and markets however they want and they don't pay attention to the response to the to, to the response of what you know the the market is telling them like there's a reason why they do like those small test groups is to see how in this atmosphere how did that product do what was the reaction if it was really good 
then they go to, to a bigger group and then they can send it to the masses. If there are issues right there, then they tweak it and they keep tweaking it until they're like, you know what, we got it, we got it pretty decent enough, we're confident we can send it to the masses. That's the same thing when it comes to our business. There's always little tweaks. And if we're not getting our message clear, if we're kind of getting, you know, a little bit, you know, off, off topic and being more of a tangent, then we need those people to be able to tell us right off the bat, hey, girl, I know you're super passionate, but we don't get it. Your message is totally lost or it's got nothing to do with your, your reasoning of why it is that you're a coach and the people that you're trying to connect to. So then, okay, we got to take that out and pair it out. Um, like for me, I've decided I'm not going to talk about my divorce anymore. I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to be the, a divorced single mom, right? I'm just going to be a stay at home mom. It doesn't matter anymore. Uh, cause I just feel like that brings on this like poor me negative connotation of being divorced. And that's not where I'm at. I'm not sad about it. I mean, it's an unfortunate thing. It's not something I planned on, but it happened done. I'm happy and I'm moving forward. I don't want to be stuck in the past. And that's not, the, that's not how I would describe myself. If I would describe the qualities of, of who I am. I don't like walk around with like a big like divorce across my forehead. Um, so I've decided I'm going to stop talking about it. Now, will I talk maybe about co-parenting? Sure. Um, but I probably won't be talking co-parenting about my ex. I'll probably talk about co-parenting with, with, um, with my boyfriend and then with his ex. Um, and that's just my choice of what I would rather do. So sometimes you have to think about, you know, yeah, it's part of you and it's a part of your life, but not every single part is something that um, is really going to get you to connect with the people that you want, with the people that you had listed down, right? Of what are you looking for in a leader and what, qual what qualities do you like and what qualities do you want to have in a coach? Um, if you have somebody who's always going to fixate on the negative and on the sad and on the, and on the tragic part, Maybe that's not somebody that's going to be that great at motivating and grabbing and trying to help others, you know, have a better, more fulfilling lifestyle and thrive. And the last one is really exuding joy and showing that you love what you do, which you all do a really fantastic job. So I don't think number five is really a problem. Um, what I think the part of where the, 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 like the subsection of loving what you do is the inviting part, right? We don't all love the inviting part, the cold messaging part. Um, but if you take down that fear, you take down that prejudgment of you already anticipating them saying no. And it's kind of like what I posted earlier in the day and sharing, you know, what, um, what Julie had kind of told me in that she makes it into a game for herself because you just never know where that person is in their journey. Uh, and you just never know, just keep at it. Um, and if you need the scripts that I have, as far as the follow-ups, and it's very specific about if you, they, if they, um, if it's from somebody who you sent a link to and they haven't, and they haven't responded. If it's somebody who was just interested in the coach opportunity and they didn't respond. Somebody who said they were interested in a challenge group didn't respond. You know, um, I have so many different follow-ups from uh, different scenarios that you're, that you can use. So if it's the inviting part that's really making you overwhelmed and anxious and you kind of want to avoid it, let me know because I have an amazing amount of scripting, excuse me, not to mention the new Fit Fire Empire guidebook has a whole section of pretty much all of my scripts that I sent to Nicole that there should not be one situation really that you have, that you cannot go into there and figure out which one would best suit that situation. Um, I have spent a lot of time in different trainings and webinars and really compiling that. I just don't think that I ever had one really great document to share that with everybody. And, um, you know, I put it all in my notes on my phone. I have an exact, I have an objections one. I have, I have two follow-ups. I have, um, Beach body inviting. I've even got inviting to a challenge group and I've inviting to coach opportunity, inviting voice messages, inviting scripts, basically. Um, I think that's all of the different ones that I have. Um, but I made sure that I put them all in my notes because I wanted to have them in my with my with me all the time because I do most of my stuff on the phone. Um, and so that's just another step to making sure that you have 
everything accessible to you so that you can really attack being successful in this business. So inviting, I avoided a lot. I kind of was like, oh, I'm doing my business because I'm showing up, I'm posting, I'm inviting, I'm, you know, I'm doing all those kinds of things, but it doesn't really matter because that is all just marketing. That's just putting it out there and hoping and praying that somebody like wants to message you. And nobody is really going to just flat out message you that often. They need a lot of reassurance. They need acknowledgement and praise and be like, hey, I saw that you, you liked my post. Thank you so much for supporting me. I've got this really awesome, you know, you know, coach op going on or whatever. And we're opening registration. Da, 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 da. You wanted, you want to join. There's no, uh, you know, there's no strings attached. That's pretty much it. And so I go through everybody who's watched my stories. Um, I go through everybody who has liked my posts on Instagram and on Facebook, and I send them the exact same two scripts, whether I think that they'd be really great joining our team or whether I, or whether I want to invite them to a challenge group. That's it. Simple. Done. I think yesterday was like over 20 and I think I got seven no's and two not right now's, <laughs> you know? And so now it's just a response back. Even when they say no, there's a response for when they say no and be like, absolutely not a problem. Sometimes it's just not the right time, but just know whenever you're ready, my groups are open to you and please continue to follow my journey. That's it. You know, so keeping that good, that open conversation going because there's no such thing as a bad conversation when someone keeps responding back to you and you're positive. Um, and it's so Oh, and the last thing too, and I haven't done this and I need to, is getting business cards. Super cheap. I know like on Vistaprint, you can get them really cheap. I mean, Beachbody, you can order them through Beachbody too, but it's just so generic and Team Beachbody that I kind of would rather not have it being so much Team Beachbody logo on there. But think of it. Anytime you go to some of those restaurants, you can plop in your, down your business card in there. You go to Starbucks, you can put your business cards up on the, that magnetic board. There's a lot of other places that you can utilize and leave your business cards. I know my boys swim, swim school. They have a little stand where you can put your business cards. Shoot, you know, like it's, it's like free advertisement that they're allowing you to place some of their stuff there. So some people, yeah, and by walking by, they might see it. Um, another really good thing, last thing I'm going to say is Julie did this on the back of the beach bars was that she wrote on, a on the sticker, like the address label sticker. She wrote like, want more? Uh, and contact, and then she put her, her email. I don't know if she put her phone number too. I don't know if it's big enough, but those are really great ideas too. You know, so if you have a little extra money or, you know, you got a little extra bonus that, you know, one week or whatnot, yeah. Or if you have like your personal order, maybe just give up maybe like four or five bars, you know, for that month and leave them somewhere. I know some of the ladies, they're having their kids take the beach bars to school and eat them for snacks. And so they're going to have to have their teacher or somebody, there was someone in the lunchroom, help them open it and they're going to see it, you know, or even their kid friends are going to ask, Hey, what are you eating? You know, so there are very clever ways on how to extend what we're doing in our business, but definitely inviting does not need to be such a fearful thing. Um, take the judgment out. You just never know. Just like think about how it is that you were brought into this, into this team as well. Was somebody asking you a bunch of times? Were they motivating you? Were they saying that they really saw that you could do, you could do great with this? Um, how were, how were they talking to you? And kind of remember that, think about it, reflect on it, and then do the same thing. <laughs> and maybe you can do it better if you practice it and you do it over and over again. Um, Cause that's the goal really is that I want you guys to be able to do better than me, to make less mistakes as I did. Um, and to then really have the confidence to crush it because you all can do it. Absolutely. The hardest part really was showing up every day to work out and to change the way you eat and to see the transformation going. So that's the hard work. The rest of it is just fun to being able to share and to be able to connect with other people and to, be able to have the ability to make sure that people that are just like you, the ones that you want to, to have as part, of, as part of your team, leaders that you want in your team, that they don't have to go through the struggle as much as you did. The so same thing like me. So 
but I don't, don't want to have somebody feel like that they've, that they've been a victim for so many years and can't ever talk about it. I don't want them to, to have be completely lost and have no idea what their purpose is, you know, after having kids and then feel like they're just stuck and that's the way it needs to be. You know, I want to be able to attack that and find those people beforehand to know that you don't need to go through those things. And if you are going through those things, I've been there, or I know that our team has been there and we will get you through it. Um, so those were kind of just the reviews I wanted to go through. I thought were really awesome that we had in the last year. And um, for me to also re refresh my memory, but then also I think for you guys to be have the memory refreshed and our newbies, to hear some of these things that maybe we have overlooked when we um, do our coach trainings or get you started. Um, so we're going to get you started right, whether it's, you know, years later or it's been a few months or a few weeks. So thank you guys so much for listening to the call. Um, next week we'll have a different topic, but also keep in mind of all the things that we did talk about and try to just implement little things. You don't need to revamp everything that's too overwhelming, but definitely certain things that you feel that are your weakness like your Achilles heel really try to you know think and dive deep into that and 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 um and just little baby steps and if you need that help and need the guidance you know you can always reach out to me or your upline coach um and or seek out you know a success partner somebody that you that you look up to you admire that you know that you guys would mesh well and that you definitely could help each other um to stay accountable so have a fantastic night and i will talk to you guys later